the city or something. If we weren't doing that, we'd probably at home playing Jamming 2K. 2K. Basketball games. So <laughs> basketball was, was our life. Oh, there you go. <laughs> that high school. Holy shit. Boom. Sky he was flying through there. Yeah! 42-inch vertical, that's right. Alright guys, how are we? Welcome back to another video. Today's video we're focusing on Henry Ruggs, the third, the Alabama wide receiver who was selected by the Raiders this year in the 12th pick of the 2020 NFL Draft. Now Henry Ruggs is uh, an athlete. He's an elite athlete actually. His numbers are absolutely ridiculous. But one thing I didn't really get to see is, is I guess any behind the scenes stuff. I didn't really hear him talk a whole lot and, and that's something that's pretty important to me you know. So this, this, uh, this series actually looks like it's put together really well. It's on the Alabama uh, Crimson Tide YouTube channel and um, it seems to be obviously following Henry Ruggs to the pros. I don't know if they've done that for Jerry Judy Road to the Pros. No, they haven't. I've just done it with uh, Henry Ruggs. So with that being said, guys, sit back, relax, and let's get into it. I swear I like your style. Put you in Chanel because it's just perfect for your smile. Girl, I swear for you, I run the world, I run the miles. The way you look at me, I think I'm going insane. myself as an NFL player. See, that's the first time I've heard him speak, man. Getting drafted to the NFL, I always thought basketball. Basketball was always my thing. That's really interesting because I did make the call. I made the call in the last video when I saw his uh, vertical and broad jump. I said, look, this guy needs to be, I, well, I didn't say he should be playing basketball, but I did say that he could definitely windmill dunk and he could definitely 360 dunk. And at the end of the day, <laughs> well, to me, that's what matters. It was his first and only love. Now, he enjoyed playing all of them, but basketball was his passion. You know, a lot of kids around, so he's, he was a friendly environment. Everybody got along, and you were, you were really sheltered. So he kind of got out, got to be social. You were really, a lot of kids around, so he's, he was a friendly environment. Everybody got along, and you were... You weren't really sheltered, so you kind of got out, got to be social, and got to be active. Rod was the only person, he was like my, like I said, my best friend, my other half, and he, he was one person that I, that I told everything. I'm, I'm not really a, a social, I wasn't really a social person, I was bottled up, and he was the only person that knew everything. And the trade kind of balanced out each other, you know, they kind of kept each other head straight. Um, I think they became closer as they grew up, grew up together and start, you know, where, where sports began to, to mean something to them. Yeah, game day. Yeah. Game day. Oh, how exciting would game day be? We weren't at Lee High School shooting around. We were at Southeast Y. We weren't at Southeast Y. You know, find a hoop session somewhere at, around the city or something. If we weren't doing that, we are probably at home. Jamming 2K. 2K. Basketball game. So <laughs> basketball was, was our life. Oh, there you go. <laughs> that high school. Holy shit. Boom. <laughs> yeah. 42 inch vertical. That's right. Damn, son. Whatever he done. Sport, whatever. He finessed it. Phenomenal athlete um, already uh, in eighth grade, so we saw him do that, some of the things he was doing. So we're, we anticipate him have an opportunity to come over here and play football. Just give me two days a week. You can go play AAU basketball. If you can just give me two days a week to just kind of learn some of the plays. Rod kind of pushed him toward it, kept telling him, man, you can, you can be a five star. You can be a five star. And that's what he used to call him a five star. He would just, he just say, wow. you, you can do it. Like, you better than, you better than half of them. Oh my god, bro, without that coach to push him, this story may never have happened. You know, the, the football coaches, they kind of, they kind of knew what kind of competitor I was. So they, they kind of tried to, 
do this reverse psychology thing like, oh, you can't do what you did. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. Interesting. If you can't get him with kindness, you go for the reverse psychology angle. You tell him what he can't do and he's going to he's gonna want to do it 10 times more. Especially for, a, for an incredible athlete who knows, he knows he can do it. It's just he needed someone to confirm it. You can't do this, this high school football, this, this 7 eight, this 6 eight football, you can't do all that. I'm like, you can't tell me, but I don't care how small I am, what, like, I, I know what I can do. Oh, hell yeah. You know, once I went out and, and started to have success, now I'm like, okay, I got it down. Now I'm confident in myself and I know I can go out and, you know, perform with the best of them. And, and that's exactly what I did. Oh, oh, mate! He picks up on things quickly. He's one of those kids who just put the ball in his hand. He Love that. Quickly. First kickoff, he was runs it back like 80 yards for a touchdown. To my super fast, don't want to be tapped, so super I think fast. we saw that. I told him, I said, son, are you just that fast or do you run that fast because you don't want to be hit? <laughs> and he just blew up. You know, it, it was, I guess, it was hard for people to stop him. It was hard for people to guard him, and he just blew up, like. Actually, I got two offers after my second game was in a year from Mississippi State and Kentucky. They just kind of kept coming, kept coming, kept coming. Boxes of offers. <laughs> Boxes of offers. So. Wow. They were coming. They were coming fast, <laughs> and everybody wanted them. The big school, you know, some small schools, but the ones that matter. Coming. Yeah. You know, once I got an offer from the University of Alabama, that that kind of hit me. I was just like, no, I, might, I might, I might be alright in this football thing. So I might, might need to. That's the thing, man. You go to Alabama. You, if you're a starter at Alabama, it already gives you a fifty percent chance of fucking getting drafted, right? I mean, just through the fact that you know, it's basically that 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 that, that saying. You know, a high tide raises all boats. Is that is that what it's, is that what it is? I don't want to quote that without. Actually, knowing. <laughs> there it is. A high tide raises, a rising tide lifts all boats. It's associated with the idea that an improved economy will benefit all participants, or, in the world of American football, a great team will improve the draft stocks of all the individual players on that team. Leads. Yes. We're kind of locked in and focus a little more. And, you know, I kind of started to do that. And even my basketball coach, they didn't. They didn't write me off, but they were like, oh, you're a football player now. You, you got off from the number one school in the country in football. You, you're a football player. The plans were for the three of my boys to drive with Rod to the game. But Henry came down sick with the flu. My phone was just sitting by me. I feel the vibrating, you know, ignore the call. I feel the vibrating again, ignore the call. I'm, I'm asleep. I don't really want to talk. And I hated to be sick. So when I'm sick, I was just kind of shut in. And I look up and it's my cousin calling me, my cousin that, you know, gave me rides to school. You know, I'm like, what's up? What's, like, what's wrong? You all right? She's like, where you at? I'm like, I'm at home. Somebody said you got in an accident. So now I'm, you know, kind of waking myself up. I'm like, what? like, who got an accident? What you talking about? Rod, Rod was in the car. Rod, Rod, and uh, he had an accident. They said he got threw out the car. And she was saying that he was getting airlifted to the hospital, you know, right by my house. So... You know, that was, that was all I needed to hear. I hung up the phone. I just caught out running. First thing I did, I just took off running to the hospital and running out to the emergency room. I could barely breathe. I could barely talk. We just sat there and just waited and just waited and waited. You know, I went went talk to his mom. Thrown from the car. Dad, just getting, getting updates and everything. And it was just like, he's in ICU. No seatbelt. Okay, we gonna come back tomorrow, so I wake up early in the morning. I go back up there, where the doctor came out, and you could just look. You know, of course, you could just see it in, in, in their faces. And probably an hour or so later, his mom came out, and you know, you could just tell on her face, and she was just like, just shaking her head, and just that's when it hit, and it was just like he's not gonna make it. That was that was probably one of the most heartbreaking things of my life. Just just knowing that, like I said, my other half just no longer there. But I knew 
he knew that he had to do this for his friend. Is that what he's going to say? That eventually I, I, I'll carry that legacy and, and keep that, you know, everything that he taught me with me. But just to know that he, he I can't physically be with him anymore, that, that, was, that was heartbreaking. That live with me forever. I got this wristband. I never take it off for anything. I mean, that's like I said. That's, that's somebody that's gonna that's gonna live with me forever. This guy's still only twenty one. That was four years ago. Rod had a vision, and he told him that he was a five star athlete, and he saw him going to play for Bama. Of course, as a mom, you want your baby to go and be play for the best because they're saying he is the best. So I wanted to give him that opportunity to do that. Um, but in the end, it was Rod that eventually made him make that decision. It was it was because of Rod. I knew that when I made my commitment video, it was going to be a, a tribute to him. So I'm laying this cap on Rod's grave. Let him know that's where he was going, you know, Alabama. So, for someone that you know to dedicate there, not just his, well, basically his college career, he dedicated it to him. So. April twenty seventh, ninety eight to March fourth, twenty sixteen. So he's seventeen. It means a lot. I mean, it's, it's not even words can even express how much it meant to us. Yes, sir. I love the parent aspect, man. It gets me every time. Every time. The parents, bro. Talking about how proud they are of their kid. A business decision as well, you know. You know, what more can you ask for? You know, when you go to college, everybody want to win. Fuck, man. <laughs> well, this is pretty cool. Um, how many episodes? Four. Four episodes. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I'm gonna to have to make that decision off camera. But, Henry Ruggs thought he was gonna be a basketballer, was balling out at high school. Then his best friend told him, you're gonna be a five-star recruit in football. Best friend passed away at age 17 at the last year of high school. He, tribu he, he, he tributed his, oh God, yeah. That was back in 2017. I mean, he still had to ball out for Alabama. He got there with the, the, the he, he, he was surrounded by the best wide receiver core in uh, the nation and he had to fight for his position and he did because he believed in himself and his best friend certainly did too and I do too and he's going to the Raiders and that's fucking exciting <laughs> but there is one thing and one thing only look if we can if we can finish this on a bit of a a bit of a laugh um, there is one thing and one thing only that I I think of when I hear of, of any person going to the Raiders and uh, well, that is uh, this. But more than anything, I want better execution. Are we clear on that? I want better fucking execution. And with that being said, I'll see you later, guys. Have a fantastic day. And, uh, well, I'm just going to hold, hold fire there. We're going to go to Henry Ruggs' teammate, Jerry Judy. He came in at number 15. He's going to the Denver Broncos. And I'm excited to see him play. We're probably going to do something as in-depth as what we've done with Henry Ruggs because these guys could be pro bowlers, you know, could be Hall of Famers. Who knows? It's all up to them now. And that's the exciting thing. So I'll see you then, guys. Peace out and have a great day.